So we got we got company coming in in a moment. And the reason I bring this up is because uh, the assistant executive director of external affairs for the NFL Players Association, Georgia Tala, good friend of mine, good friend of the show, been a while since he's been on. He's like, oh, we should, we should, you should, you know, come back on, come kick it with us, come talk about state of the league, state of the union, or whatever. He's like, yeah, and I want to talk about Christmas songs. Okay, good. All right, let's bring in, let's bring in George. He's like, I was like, okay, you want to talk about Christmas songs? Sure, why not? And I'm not gonna steal his thunder, cause he gave me a hot take, and I'm like, bruh, let's hear. You it. are on some serious drugs if you think what, Georgia Tyler? Go ahead. Why did you have to argue with me? that Mariah Carey is not the number one Christmas song on oh, everybody's crazy. list. That's crazy. Why no. is that crazy? It's insane. No, it's because there's only one. All I want for Christmas? That, is that, that song? That's the one? All I want for Christmas? That's, that's the one? Yes. Not no. even close. Go ahead, Michael. School. That's not, not even your close. top five? Not even close. Not even close. No. Uh -uh. The number one. Give him the, give him the top the five, one. Michael. Wait, wait, hold on. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not this one, not this one. Hold on, take oh, this down. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Michael. Give him the top five. We ain't even rehearsed this, George. Give him oh, the top right, five, my Michael. Gosh. All right, number one, Donny Hathaway, This Christmas. Number two, Donny Hathaway, This Christmas. <laughs> uh, number three is Donny Dylan. Hathaway, This Christmas. Dylan, 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 and Dylan. Okay, like, it is Donny <laughs> Hathaway, This Christmas. Every day, twice on Sunday, and especially on December 25th. Crazy. How, 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 are you, how are you leaving out the grifters? How are you guys leaving out the grifters in the top five? Okay, throw, okay, throw, throw, throw the up this list. Christmas, okay, throw the white Christmas list. by the grifters let's is see, Let's see the rest of your list, George. Let's see your list. Let's see this whack list. Christmas All I want for Christmas oh is you, God. Mariah Carey. They got police the knocking down up there. White hey, Christmas. Kids. Santa Claus is coming to town. Jackson 5 or Spring Either version. Okay. Okay. Oh, little town now, Bethlehem now, by now listen, Sinatra. Now listen, my criteria is, and this year everybody's okay, staying home, right? We're all staying home. Nobody's going out to the stores. So because even though we got the Smith's holiday card, Christmas card in November, which, okay, fine. This signals <laughs> the start of everything. We're not going into the stores and we're not getting annoyed that we're hearing, you know, Christmas songs at Home Depot on Halloween. So my theory here is that this year we're a little bit starved of the music. So what are the top five songs that you would have to listen to if you could only listen to those five songs during the holiday season? That's how I came up with these five. Okay, all right. That's a good, that's a good okay. So you guys are on one list. song? That's good diversity on that list. I will give you that. Good cultural I mean, diversity on that know, list. That's pretty there good. There has to be some, yeah. Representation no, matters, guys. No, not in this case. <laughs> Uh, Michael, do you have? Because I got five that come to mind. I didn't. I didn't build a list, but I have five that come to mind. Okay, this is this is this. Is, okay, this is the way it goes for me. All right, it is. Like, all jokes go. aside, Michael's right though. It's, there's no argument. Number one is Donna Hathaway. This Christmas, there's no argument. It's great. There. Sorry. Great. Okay, that's number Perfect. one. Number two, Silent Night by the Temptations. Oh, okay, man, that's number going two. Deep. That's all a right. good one. You ever hear and that if one? If you want honorable honorable mention, deep. is Temptations Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Pretty much anything the Temptations sing. Hey, number Rudolph. Three, Boys to Men. Boys to Men, Let It Snow. That's number three. All right? They number had a four. really underrated album, by the way. Christmas album. Exactly. Number four. What do the lonely do at Christmas? George, it's too old for you. What do the lonely do at Christmas <laughs> by the emotions? All right? That's number four. And number five. Little known fact outside of Atlanta. Players Ball. Outcast Players Ball started out as a Christmas song. So Players really? Ball is I number five. That. Yes. Players Ball is to Christmas songs what Die Hard is to Christmas movies. There you go. That's how my about, five. How about James? How about James Brown? Santa Claus goes straight to the ghetto. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that one. That don't make it. That's you, too much. You know. That's you know. Much. You know. In, in our neighborhood, Dominic the Donkey was up there, but in Queens, we had a large Italian community who that song made people go crazy. Yeah, people. Our, people are wild about that song. It's it's no, that's you a know, good one. It's up there. You no, know, really. You know what, George? You got some. You have some really good ones on on your list. Now, the reason I mentioned Police Navidad is because some people just go. That is a that is a polarizing one. Some people say, "Wait a minute, that's just it's too much." Because you hear that a lot. You hear that song a lot, so it kind of goes I against know. your criteria. That's like a home. You'll hear that in Home Depot. But it makes it, it makes us happy. I don't know. It just gets us moving in this household. 
you hear that song and everybody, people can't stop, but you know, I can't help but move around. And plus, my middle What's kid's name is Elise, so she thinks it's uh, about good. her because it's Elise Navidad. There you go. So there you go. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. That's what's the good. one? Um, what's the one McCartney did? Um, and know. you know the you know the Paul no. McCartney. They, they played all. all no, the time. I don't. I, I I got you, dog. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll pull <laughs> I pulled it. Up. I, I pulled up. I yes, you. Come on. There's one, one song. Uh, and like, in the, in like, in there like wonderful Christmas Paul? Yeah. Wonderful Christmas. Holly's, got, heard song. Holly's on to something. And people yeah. think people think it's terrible, but it's so terrible that it's actually good. I like that one. <laughs> I actually like that one. Do you? You know that. Okay. Mike, you've heard the song so many times. It's Paul I might, but you're not giving me enough. This is like uh this is like charades and I'm, I'm not like, you're not gonna give me word, to sing two it. Words, I'm not singing it. Like, uh, yeah. Am, am I allowed to and Google it while we're on this? Yeah, you can Google it. Um if, I, if you could multitask, because I do want to ask you a, a, a somewhat serious question. We can we can multitask. It's wonderful Christmas time by Paul McCartney. Thank you. Oh, you did have it, Michael. That's what you said. There you, you go. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you said. You said, one, yeah, you had it. Um, I'm glad we could kind of, you know, have some holiday cheer with you because I know it's been a something of a, of a stressful year for all of us, but for Very you in particular. So. Your last appearance on this show, I'm told, was September 29th. It was like very early in the show, very early in the season, therefore. If we had told you that, I'm going cliche questions. If we had told you then, George Tyler of the National Football League Players Association, that after... Uh, 13 weeks of the season. Is it 13 or 12 weeks? What will we, we just finish? Week just 13? tonight we'll wrap up week 13, or I guess tomorrow. Yeah, week 13. The there you go. 12 games, 13 weeks. After the week 13, you will have not you will have not had any games postponed or canceled due to COVID. What would you have said? I'd be surprised. Pleasantly surprised. You know, at this point, because I think we've had a couple, you know, we've had a bunch of games had to get rescheduled. Obviously, we got a game kicking off in 28 minutes this afternoon. Um, so I, I definitely yeah, have been pleasantly postpone, surprised with our progress. When I say postpone, I mean to after the season. Obviously, you did have some that were postponed, but you didn't have any postponed until you didn't have a week. Yeah, nothing's been canceled right yet. Now. Yeah, nothing's yeah. been canceled yet. Thank goodness. So. Yeah. You know, I think the last time I was on the show, I was honest about the fact that, you know, I was nervous about how things were going at that point. I think we were in the throes of the Tennessee Titans situation, and now we're just coming off the heels of the Ravens finally getting their outbreak under control in their locker room. I definitely um, have been nervous almost in 48-hour cycles. I think I walk around the house sort of waiting for our COVID emails from our from our briefing team wondering you know, how many positives is it going to be today? Will we have an outbreak like we had in, in Tennessee or in Baltimore? You know, obviously that raises the level of concern that we've got on how things are going. But, um, you know, I got I to gotta give credit to everybody who is in the locker rooms and, and the coaches and the players who have really, for the most part, adhered to the protocols to get us to this point, honestly. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised that we've made it this far, and I'm I'm pretty confident we'll get it to, we'll get to the end here. I want to ask you, George, was the plan was the plan solid from the start, or did you have to tweak something week four, week five? Did everybody have to say, "Oh, wait a minute, we got to revisit this just to get it straight"? I think both. I think we went into it with a really aggressive set of protocols which we knew we were going to have to adjust at some point during the season. And we've now made three or four, I think, key adjustments since we started because, look, the virus is novel and emerging and there's no way um, there's no way to beat it, frankly. I mean, you see the numbers in the country are rising. And I think I told you guys, on, you know, last time I was, I was on the show, the game is going to go as the country goes and the cases are going to go as the country goes. So when you look at the you know, the unfortunate heat map that we have in the United States, I think we're approaching 40,000 new cases just today. Um, we knew that we were going to have an uptick in cases and therefore our protocols had to adjust. So I think the two key, two or three key changes that we've had to make mid-season, you know, we, we made a decision to go to daily testing at the beginning of the season after a couple of weeks, which I think was really important. We made a decision to go to game day testing. I think it was after week four, and now we've made a decision to put everybody in the intensive protocols um, simply because we see the community spread getting out of control in, in the team cities and the rest of the country. And again, 
lots of postponements and reschedulings, but just to be clear, no postponements till a week 18, Correct. A hypothetical week 18, which has been discussed quite a bit, along with the the need or the possibility or whatever you want to call it of a of a bubble. A lot of people think you guys should have been in a bubble a long time ago, but there's been an increased talk with the uh, increased numbers around the country of the need for a postseason uh, bubble, if nothing else. Where's the PA stand on uh, on the, the possibility of a bubble for NFL playoff teams? I think our protocols have been effective to this point, and to make a drastic change to get to a bubble situation, you'd have to literally transport four or 5,000 people to be able to put on those games. So I think we're better off really um, focusing on the protocols we have, making sure people adhere to them, adjusting them as necessary. Cause we still, you're still going to have 14 teams come playoff time where um, they're going to be have to, you know, making travel plans and adjustments to go into said bubble and it's still going to be a big bubble. I mean, we're not talking about an NBA style bubble where there's only 500 people. Um, that is going to be a bigger challenge to get our league to go into a bubble. It's always been the case from day one. And I think our protocols have shown I mean, we're less than one and a half percent infection rate in the NFL amongst coaches and staff and other personnel. So um, we're doing pretty well. Uh, obviously, we don't want to see anybody get sick. We've had some players talk openly about how this, how hard this has hit them. Um, but you know, we're we're in a good spot, and I think we're doing everything we can to keep players as safe as possible, and hopefully get to the finish line. You've also had some players talk about how unfair this has been to them. I'm thinking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they lost their bye week. Uh, very early in the season because of uh, Tennessee. Tennessee had uh, an outbreak. And then uh, because Baltimore had an outbreak, Pittsburgh was supposed to play on Thanksgiving, and that was moved to Sunday. That was moved, moved, moved. And finally, uh, we had a, a Wednesday afternoon football game uh, in the NFL. Do you agree uh, with the Steelers who think that somehow they've uh, gotten the short end of, of some of these decisions? Yeah, I do. It's not fair. It's not fair to the players on the Steelers. It's not fair to the to the players across the league who have to, you know, every week they get um, notifications about the protocols changing. I mean, this week it's, you know, can't use the, the showers on certain days because we want to make sure guys don't congregate anywhere um, mm. in groups of more or two or three. So it's absolutely not fair. I think nothing about this season um, has been you know, normal with the exception of the performance of, of certain teams on the field. Um, you know, you, you still get to, for the most part, people are still watching the games. Um, and there is a sense of normalcy other than not having fans in the stadiums, but for us watching them on TV, I mean, I think it's pretty great and, and the season's been successful and we've had some great performances, but no, I totally agree with the Steelers players. Um, it has not been, you know, fair to them, especially to them, because they—I think—they've been shuffled around quite a bit. But frankly, every single NFL player has had to put up with um, a level of inconvenience and unfairness this year in order for us to make it through the season. And sometimes everybody's got to sort of buckle up and um, ride it out together. All right, last thing before we let you go. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, oh. you want to ask this? You want to ask this? Yeah, Mike? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know, we were, we were saying hello before we came back on and during the break. You know, uh, I said, we'll get to it. I was trying to, you know, I, 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 I agree with Holly on y'all tanking debate. So, okay, my boy is agreeing with my other boy. So, go ahead. I, I mean... I, what's, it's Trevor Lawrence, man. It's generational. Why not? What's wrong with tanking from a player's it's perspective? It's really, really hard to build an NFL roster around one guy as great as a player might be. And if you're tanking for the sake of commercial reasons, okay, that's one thing. But if you're tanking for the sake of picking one player who's going to propel you to a Super Bowl, that's an entirely different, I mean, argument altogether. My view and, and being around this league for a long time now and seeing the successful franchises and how they build, you know, rebuilding is not just a buzzword. You have to actually build the foundation of your team from the ground up if you're not very good. And um, it takes every team, you know, a couple of years. I mean, Cleveland's good this year because they had a couple of good drafts, not just one draft. They've had a couple of good ones. 
uh, coaching yeah. matters. You know, coaching matters a lot. You've seen, you know, this is basically the Browns team is the same roster as it was last year and look where they are this year. So, um, you know, the, the actual game of football is not my full expertise, but I can tell you it takes just a lot more than just one dude, unless you're doing it for the commercial reasons, then that's, Hey, the you know, what? you're my, you're my, you know what, you're George? my dude. George, I, I think the game of football it sounds like the game of football is your expertise. I mean, like, so, I, 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 you make a lot of sense to me. I, I, you're, I you're, my, you're my guy. You're my, you're my boy, Blue. Not only because you got a fire, fire uh, Cassius Clay T-shirt on, which is phenomenal. Yeah, hold that up. Hold that up a little bit. That's phenomenal. Not only because Look of that, that, but just so you know, just so you know, as we let you go, just so you know, uh, Savannah agrees with you because she said, I was, she, I was like, what's the... What's the what's the best Christmas song of all time? She was like, "All I want for Christmas is Mariah Carey. It's, it's a classic." I'm like, wow. "What the hell? You know about a classic? You're 14 years old. You don't know about no classic. 14 Come year on, old." Come on, man. And, uh, yeah. So they, and, and I thought and, you were raising. Of, and speak, I thought you were raising them well. Families, I'm failing the in that area. Holiday, the first holiday card I got this year was from my in-laws. It arrived on like October 29th. Just for the record. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Georgia Tyler, Love National you, Football League Players Association. Appreciate you, brother, man. Thanks for falling through. All right, and, uh, All right George. So far, so good. 13 weeks soon. now. Four to go. Let's keep it rolling. No cancellations. No week 18. Uh, it's about to get tougher, mm-hmm. but you guys mm-hmm. done a great job. Thank you. No victory days as yet. Let's get to the end. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.